Welcome, Great Hearts families and staff. My name is Curtis Endorf, and I'm honored to serve you as the Interim Superintendent of Great Hearts Texas. This video kicks off a series called Championing Our Great-Hearted Texas Leaders. In this, I'm gonna be journeying across the state to talk to our headmasters about our curriculum, our classical culture, our mission, our model, and what is happening in our schools every day. In our schools is where our mission comes to life, where hearts and minds are cultivated in pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty. And I am honored to have the privilege and responsibility of highlighting that work through these conversations. I've asked my good friend uh, and colleague, Dr. Dan Scoggin, to join us here today. Dan was the co-founder and CEO of Great Hearts when it launched in Arizona. He led the expansion into Texas and was the original headmaster of the school that really became the blueprint behind Great Hearts. As we talk about our mission, our model, our why, our culture, there's no one better to have that conversation with than Dr. Scoggin. So Dan, thank you for being here with me today. Oh, thank you, Curtis. It's a real joy to be with you here in this lovely environment. Yeah. Uh, we both love libraries to be in this place of learning. And, and uh, uh, you know, I've known you for many years and it's been a, a joy. It's been a, a great friendship. Uh, and it's been a, a friendship around great hearts. Yeah. And I, I think I met you 13 years ago, Curtis. Uh, when you lived in Arizona, I lived in Arizona. Um, and we were working on our, our, our growing network of great heart schools at that time. And uh, you and I started a conversation about classical education. You were working for another wonderful organization. And I was having you meet with our headmasters yeah. about, you know, how to unlock student achievement in a fully classical way. So, Dan... Tell me a little bit when 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 Great Hearts started, you have this this place of choosing a name mm -hmm. for the organization that kind of reflects what we're all about. Yeah. And, and tell us a little bit about why Great Hearts, why that name, what does that mean? You know, the the real source of the name Great Hearts it comes from uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, the book The Abolition of Man, one of his most important books. And there is a, a chapter in The Abolition of Man called Men Without Chess. And what C.S. Lewis is talking about is what's happened in the progressive era of education um, is that we've only focused on the intellect. You know, we've only focused on, you know, intelligence or skills, and we've, we've left the heart behind. We've left the sentiments behind. And what a classical education offers, I think, so uniquely is that we train children, young women and men, uh, to love noble things, lasting things. Uh, it says in scripture uh, that where your heart is, your treasure will be. Mm -hmm. And we want our our children and young men and women at Great Hearts to have a heart for truth, goodness, and beauty, to not only understand it intellectually, that that's important philosophically, but to be drawn to it, to, to find this compelling heroism that will allow them to, to go out into the culture and, and lead nobly for things beyond themselves. Um, it also sounds cool. Yeah. You know, it's uh we, you know, it's 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 about courage, it's about affection, it's about thumos in the Greek sense. So I think great hearts fits the organization and we want great hearted graduates to come out of out of these academies. Yeah. I couldn't I, I love that chapter in the abolition yeah. of man, right? Um, to to inoculate uh, our students. We need to teach them to love what is lovable, right? And yeah. to despise what is what is ugly and not right to train the affection right um, of our young men and women and there, there's the piece in there around like objective value yes subjective yes. value yeah. and how uh this is a, this is a philosophical concept whereby in objective value real is real truth is true and in, in subjective value it's up to the yeah. whims of the consumer right your truth yeah. is your truth and my truth is my truth right and is there truth and to ground, to educate in a way that yeah. is grounded in the fact that there is truth and we need to seek it out. Yeah. Uh, I could not agree more, Curtis. And I'm so glad you said that because, you know, great hearts would not be great hearts without that sense of truth as yeah. the, the first of, of, of the triad of truth, yeah. goodness, and beauty. Yeah. And I think what great hearts is solving for, you and I have talked a lot about this, is, you know, to this point that C.S. Lewis was talking about, is that there's a relation between the mind and our morality, between truth and goodness. And, you know, Theodore Roosevelt said that to educate a man's mind 
the not as morals is to create a menace to society. We don't want just brilliant kids. You know, we don't want kids just getting into Harvard or Yale. That's great. We, we love that too. But we want young men and women to graduate that truly have a moral purpose so they can take this high-powered intellect, this pursuit of objective truth, as you said, and direct it to the right ends. One without the other is not yeah. great hearted education. Exactly. Yeah. You know, what do you find essential and unique about our program? You know, there's so much to talk about across the program, but what, what stands out for you and what sets our program apart? There's a lot of ways of, of answering this, and um, I, I encourage you all to watch the rest of these series as we as we talk with headmasters about their answers to this question, because you'll hear it answered in different ways. For me, you know, we have curriculum, we have our model, we have our pedagogy, the, the conversation, learning how to agree and disagree, right, seminar. We have our traditions, um, we have our great books. Um, it, it does go back to what are you pointed toward? Yeah. Um, and is that the right end to be po pointed toward that thing? Mm -hmm. and, and really clearly in our mission, you outlined a few things. We are cultivating, we're planting and growing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. weeding and watering the hearts and minds, not just intellect, yeah. but um, intellectual virtue and moral virtue towards truth, goodness, and beauty. That is a very clear end goal. It's a very clear North Star that we oriented towards. And that's not to say that other ends are not important. Yeah. Learning, um, achieving, growing, um, treating each other well, becoming citizens in the world, those are important things as well. And they are not our end. They are not the pure form that we're pointed toward. And so, you know, I think there can feel as though there's a tension, it's A or B, um, it's it's one or the other. I think they are in alignment uh, with each other. And we have, we have the pure forms, yeah. we have our mission, that's where we're headed. And we have to make sure we achieve other pieces along the way to know if we're on track. But what is really distinct and drives all of the other pieces is that mission statement. Yeah. It's well, the fact you, of what we're driving towards. What I'm hearing you say, you know, it's first things first. Yeah. You know, but all the details matter. But yeah. if there's not a, an organizing principle, yeah. you know, and I think you've been really clear on that, that that's great hearts. First things first, truth, goodness, and beauty. But, you know, how you order uh, the transitions in, in the classroom, you know, great teaching and instruction, great pedagogy, all of those details add up. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't have the ultimate excellence unless you you win in the details yeah. too. And I hear you talk about that when you visit schools. Yeah, very much so. And the, the it's not an either or, it's a, it's a both and. There's really right. both things need to be true. And you can accomplish those things if mm -hmm. you have a different goal, but it, it wouldn't be our organization yeah. that it wouldn't have that specialness. Why is classical education so important today? Yeah. We did some research a few years ago and, and uh, there was about three or 4,000 students receiving in the in the 1990s, what we would see as a classical education, the pursuit of mm -hmm. virtue, mm -hmm. the unified pursuit of virtue that we've been talking about. And, and now there's up to a million kids across the country receiving this beautiful form of education, classical education. And, um, you know, some of those are homeschool kids out there, yeah. you know, Great Hearts, our organizations, the leading, the leading provider of brick and mortar classical education in the country. And uh, you know, the org part of the organization you're leading in Texas is the fastest growing part, yeah. you know, of great hearts. And so um, I think families long for this education because they want something time tested and proven. You know, there's so many educational fads out there. Um, there's so much uh, change out in the world. And even though a classical education may seem kind of fresh and new today, it's we're, we're actually not that innovative. We're going it's back the oldest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we're old school. You yeah. know, we're going back to a proven form of education that has been around for three millennia in in Western culture. But you know, the most important thing uh, to live in this fast-paced, technological, in some ways confusing world. You know, we have so much coming at us from all different angles as as men and women is to be able to think clearly. Mm -hmm. And like, like, like we were talking about, first things first, yeah. how do I organize all this information, um, all of this noise into a coherent purpose for what it means to, for, for me as a human being? 
you know, what, how can I be excellent? How can I be virtuous in this modern world? And a classical education offers that, it offers that fully. I think, um, you know, with, 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 with technology, um, the, the idea of truth, yeah. what is true, what is truth, mm -hmm. um, is more complicated now than ever before. Right. And, and we teach our students to grapple with those things, to be critical thinkers and, and to have the prudence and judgment Yes. Yep. Um, to have a sense of what is true and what is truth paired with what is my purpose and what is right and wrong. Yeah. And I think that's that's critical for the world and it's critical for society yeah. right now um, in many, many ways. Let's, let's talk about our teachers because this would not work without them. What, what would you want a new teacher to Great Hearts to know about what we do and why we do it? You know, the faculty are really the center of everything at Great Hearts. We serve the family. Everything's about serving that student in the classroom. Um, but the secret sauce of Great Hearts is the student-teacher relationship. And the 3,000, actually more than 3,000 faculty across across Great Hearts and in Texas and Arizona and Louisiana, um, you know, these these souls are, are really the center of, of everything that we do. Yeah. And um, we're just so glad that they come to Great Hearts. And what I would say to uh, a Great Hearts faculty member, existing faculty member is, you know, from Curtis and I, just thank you so much I, I read the letter you just sent out over the over break to the teachers you know and some of the words you were saying to them um and we're just so grateful that you've made this a, a career calling uh to bring virtue to children and to young men and women thank you for making this home and to new teachers coming to great hearts you know we pour into you uh, this is a place where you can make a career uh the community of faculty is is tight-knit you will find many friends uh, among your peers and then the professional development uh, that Great Hearts provides, I think, is 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 best in class, certainly among classical education, but just in, in terms of its depth, is yeah. best in class. That's kind of the, the power of the network, right? Yeah. That, that that you've been really clear on is there's just so much there that we can provide. Yeah. Uh, the curriculum and pedagogy portal, where every teacher can plug in uh, and and get you know real time coaching at the mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. uh, to to enter the classroom. So. Uh, you know, John Sr. said that a school is its faculty, and I would say that the faculty is Great Hearts. Uh, the curriculum is insufficient. Yeah. The curriculum comes to life through the souls that deliver it, through that engagement with loving the student around truth, goodness, and beauty. I think that's that's exactly right. I mean, we, we often talk at Great Hearts about we have students, curriculum, and, and um, teachers, right, as this kind of center tr triad of, of the work. It's all wrapped in a classical culture and our mission and what we are pointed toward. Um, right. And being pointed toward the pure forms really matters a lot. And who our faculty are, their character, um, their own virtue matters mightily. There's the question of can, can virtue be taught? And the answer of no, but it can be learned. Mm. It can be learned through an illative process of, of inference, of modeling from those around you. And our faculty are the models, are the role models for our kids. So thank you for what you do. And thanks for being a part of this journey that we are on here together. Dan, I wanna thank you very much well, for thank coming you, Curtis. out. Uh, it's been an honor. It's been a joy, it's been um, fun. For everyone, D Dr. Scoggin has been a, a great friend and mentor for me over the years and um, going back 13, 14 years ago in Arizona and our conversations there to today. This is the conversation we are having about our mission and about how we move it forward into the world. And I want to invite everyone to continue to on this journey about championing great hearted Texas leaders, where we have conversations with our headmasters about the work they do, why they do it and what is happening in our schools. There are beautiful things happening in our schools all across, and we wanna share that work with you. Thank you.